These are the top 10 budget mechanical keyboards. If at any point during the video you want to check out any of the 10 keyboards, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's jump into the number 10 spot. And that is the Red Dragon K617 Fizz. This comes in at only 40 bucks. It is a 60% form factor, so if you like a smaller form factor, you want to save space, or if you are a gamer, this is a great form factor for you. Now, build quality is where this lacks a little bit. It's basically all plastic construction. Even the plate is plastic. It's definitely quite light and it is pretty hollow. However, interestingly enough, it actually sounds pretty good and we'll have a sound test in a bit. Now you can choose from either a gray or pink colorway and they're kind of not all gray. Like you can see they have a nice kind of pattern on it. You don't really see that on more budget keyboards. Now all models come with a single switch, which is an Altemu red switch, which is good for this price point. I think a red switch is good that they went with that. Uh, continuing on with that, the stabilizers are actually really good. And considering that this is only $40, this is like the lowest you're gonna go. I don't think I've ever recommended a keyboard lower than $40. But yeah, it's quite impressive for the price point. Take a listen. And that is how it sounds. Now, insanely enough, this is hot swappable with other Altemus. You can swap in some Altemus into that keyboard. You can check out some of my other modding videos to actually see some of the other switches that will fit an Altemu slot. So this is this keyboard can be actually modded quite heavily. This uses USB-C for connectivity on the left, left side, like not on the back left side, on the left, left side. But moving on, the RGB is insanely good. Like it is the best RGB on any Red Dragon keyboard that they make, which is crazy because this is also one of the cheapest that they make. So it's really good. It's incredibly vibrant. It's incredibly bright, really, really bright. Tons of different modes, reactive, statics, rainbow, whatever you want. You can basically do anything with the RGB. It is quite good, especially if you wanna put something like putting keycaps on here, this would absolutely work. For the price of only 40 bucks, this is an awesome first mechanical keyboard or a fantastic gift. But moving on to the number nine spot, this is the Pulsar Lunar Alloy PK001 coming in at again, only 40 bucks. But now this is a TKL rather than a 60%. So you get your function keys at the top, you get some of those multimedia keys, and then you get all of your arrow keys, which is nice, especially if you like a bigger form factor. Now, build quality is a step up from the K617 with a metal top alloy plate, which is very nice. The bottom is still plastic, and overall, the keyboard still feels light, but not quite as light as the K617. The edges on it are machine and then painted black. It looks really nice, and everything just fits together nicely. They did a really good job with the build quality considering the $40 price point. Now this comes in only black, but you do have a choice between Outemu reds, blues, or browns. Reds are gonna be linear, browns are gonna be tactile, blues are gonna be tactile and clicky. Now the stabilizers do come pre-lubed, which is pretty awesome, and they do sound really good. Again, considering the price point, there's little to no rattle or a minimal rattle uh, from the factory, which is very impressive considering, again, this is only 40 bucks. I have the red switches, take a listen. And that is how it sounds. Now at this $40 price point, you do get the metal deck, so you do have to cut on something else that the K617 does have, which is hot swap ability. This is a soldered on board, so you cannot hot swap those switches out. That's a little bit of a shame, but again, $40, you're getting a lot for your money still. Now this also doesn't have a detachable cable, but the cable is really nice. It's like a loosely braided, almost like an ultralight mouse cable. If you've ever used an ultralight um, razor mouse with that ultralight cable, this is exactly what it feels like. It's pretty cool. Now the RGB is a mixed bag on this one. It doesn't have per key RGB. So basically the color that one of the keys is gonna be is always gonna be that color. That being said, this is the best non per key RGB lighting on a keyboard in my opinion. It's quite bright, it's vibrant, the colors are good, and the overall pattern is kind of that rainbowy, but it doesn't look in your face. It just looks clean, and I really do like it. But for only 40 bucks, you get to choose between the K617 Fizz and this one to see if you want one, a metal plate, a bigger form factor, or if you want a smaller form factor and hot swappability, 
you can go with the K617. But again, this would be a great gift or a great first mechanical keyboard. Both of these are seriously impressive for only 40 bucks. Moving on to the number eight spot. This is the Red Dragon K599. This is my favorite Red Dragon keyboard that they have ever made coming in at only 53 bucks. Now the form factor is switching it up a little bit. This is a 65% form factor, which means you're gonna have similar space saving to a 60% board, but you're gonna gain some of those multimedia keys and all of your arrow keys, which is really nice. This is one of my favorite form factors and a lot of enthusiasts favorite form factors. Now build quality gets quite good here with a solid plastic shell for the base a metal top plate, and overall a very rigid keyboard. This is also quite a bit heavier than the other two. Part of that may be due to the battery because this can be used wirelessly with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, which is amazing for gaming. So if you wanna game wirelessly, you can do it because it keeps that 1000 Hertz polling rate. Epic. Now this only comes in black with Altemu red switches. Nice linear switch, especially if you're gonna to wanna to be doing gaming with this or typing. However, these are the best stabilizers on any Red Dragon keyboard that they've made. Take a listen, I obviously have the reds. And that is how it sounds. Now this is hot swappable with other Outemu switches. There are a few other switches that fit in Outemu slots, like I said before, um, but moving on from that, the connectivity is good. Where you can connect it with a USB-C on the left side, you can run it in just wired mode, or you can use that 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle that is the way to do it with this keyboard. Really fantastic. Also great range with the dongle, very impressive. Now RGB is per key lighting. You have all the modes, all the static colors, really whatever you want. However, the biggest downfall of this keyboard is the RGB because it's just not the brightest in the world. Now, if you've never used like a mechanical keyboard before that has RGB on it, this will seem really good to you, especially if you're coming from something like a laptop because it's way brighter than those. Uh, however, just comparatively to the other keyboards on this list, it's not as bright. However, for 53 bucks, this is a great stock keyboard that has wireless connectivity and a great form factor. Moving on to the number seven spot, this is the Royal Kledge RK61. Coming in at only 53 bucks, this is one of the most popular keyboards to get into keyboard modding. All right, now obviously this is a 60% keyboard. The build quality is good. It's pretty just basic but that's what I like about it because you can customize it how you want. The bottom shell is just a single plastic shell with a metal top deck, which is nice and rigid. Now, moving on from that, the really cool thing with this case is that in the bottom of the case, there is four screws, and that is how you take off the PCB and the plate. That's huge for modding because most keyboards, you have to take off all those keycaps and you gotta do like nine screws on the top of it. This one, it's in the bottom. So if you need to take them off, throw some foam in there, put it right back on, you don't even have to take off your keycaps or if you wanna spray paint it, paint a different color, whatever you wanna do, it makes modding it and getting into modding it really, really easy. This is not something to overlook because the RK61 is one of the easiest keywords to mod out there. Now this comes in either black or white with switch options between red, brown, or blue switches. Now the stabilizers in total stock form could definitely use some tuning. However, after modding, they can sound quite good. Here's a sound test of a totally stock RK61 and then a modded build that I did. Take a listen. And that is how it sounds. Now this is also fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches, which means you can put any switch you want, basically any switch in the world that you want into this keyboard, which is awesome. That's another reason this is so cool to mod and at only 50 bucks, you're getting full hot swappability. Let's use a detachable USB-C for connectivity on the left side on the Amazon page. For some reason it shows it in the middle, but it's on that left side. So that's great if you wanna use a custom coiled cable or something like that for your build. But yeah, great. Now RGB is fantastic. It's got perky lighting, all the modes, reactive, statics, rainbow, whatever you want. However, it is super, super bright, like really, really bright. So that's great if you wanna put putting keycaps on there or you just like a lot of backlight glow, it's great for that. For 50 bucks, this is an awesome keyboard to mod and you get a ton of value. Moving on to the number six spot, I have included it in the same timestamp as the RK61 because it's the RK68. Coming in at only $3 more than the RK61 at 50 
33 bucks. Now this is basically identical to the RK61 in almost every single way, except that this is a 65% form factor, so you get some of your multimedia keys and you get those arrow keys, whereas on the RK61, it's just a 60% form factor. Now it still comes in either black or white with all the same switch options. You still get full hot swap ability. You still get that same great RGB. It still uses attachable Type-C for connection. I have the Reds, take a listen to the sound test. And that is how it sounds. Overall, a great keyboard for modding, and in my opinion, a better form factor than the RK61, but that's all up to personal preference. Moving on to the number five spot, this is the LTC NB681 Nimbleback, coming in at only 53 bucks. This is again a 65% form factor and the same price as the RK68, so there's definitely some competition going on there. However, in my opinion, I think the LTC is a little bit better, but I think all of this is up to personal preference. And the build quality on this is slightly heavier than the RK68. It's also a little bit less generic. And this also has flip up risers on the bottom, which the RK68 does not have. Now this is a split design, which means those arrow keys and the multimedia keys are actually kind of off to the right a little bit. Uh, whereas on the RK68, they're not. Now I personally prefer this, which is why I put it further down on the list. However, if you do prefer no split design, go with the RK68. Now we aren't done with build quality yet, and this is another reason I prefer the LTC Nimbleback over the RK68, although both of them are great, is that this one has a removable skirt and it's easily removable. You just pop it right off. And with this skirt, it covers basically all of the keyboard except for those keycaps when it's on your desk. So if you wanna just pop that skirt off, go outside, spray paint it, change the color, put it right back on, you're ready to go, and you just change the color of your keyboard without even taking anything off, not even unscrewing anything, that's huge. Now this comes in either black or white with switch options between red, brown, or blue switches. The stabilizers on this do need some tuning, but they are slightly better than the RK68, although this probably won't make any difference after being tuned. Now this overall in stock form sounds a little bit better than the RK68. I have brown switches, take a listen. And that is how it sounds. Now this is fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches. So absolutely fantastic. You wanna swap some other switches in here, which I think all of you guys getting this are probably going to do. But moving on from that, the connection is fantastic. This uses a USB-C for connection. However, it has two powered USB type A's on the board. So if you wanna plug in your other peripherals, maybe a headset, maybe a mouse, something, maybe your phone to charge it, you can do that with this keyword. So that is really cool. It gives you the skirt, it gives you all that stuff, gives you the flip up risers. It's a little bit more gimmicky and I like that kind of stuff. I also like the split design. So I prefer this over the RK68, but they're both fantastic. RGB is also great on par with the RK68 and RK61. It's bright, it's vibrant, all the modes you want, all the statics, whatever you want. But for 53 bucks, you're either gonna want this or the RK68. If you want a 65% keyboard that you want to mod, both are great, but let's move on to the number four spot, which is the Yunzai KC68. Coming in at 86 bucks, this is awesome for the money and it's definitely still budget. Now the build quality is great with a two-piece style plastic shell. It's got a metal plate. It feels heavy and well put together. It definitely feels a lot more substantial and the other one's on the list, but it is a little bit more expensive. And this also has dual stage risers, which is something you typically find on a little bit nicer keyboards. All right, now this thing comes in three different colorways. There is lavender with a white case, there is lavender with a translucent case, and the lavender is kind of white keycaps with a purple uh, like text look. It's very cool looking. Uh, and then moving on, there is shimmer with a smoked translucent case. So it's kind of a gray uh, translucent case. All of these are great, and I have another Gunzai keyboard with these same keycaps, and the shimmer colorway does look very cool. All right, now the big thing with this is in stock form, it comes with night swishes. You have the option between Gateron Red, blue, brown, black, or yellow, which is my personal favorite. Now the stabilizers are very good. They are tuned from the factory quite well with literally no rattle. You can definitely add some foam inside the case to make it sound a little bit more thocky, but the stabilizers are really good from the factory. Take a listen, I have yellow switches.
and that is how it sounds. Now this is fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches. So this is great if you wanna mod it in the future. However, the stock switches feel pretty dang good, especially the yellows, which is my personal favorite, very light switch very nice and smooth, especially considering the price. Now this uses a detachable USB-C port connectivity and the RGB is really, really good. Even though these aren't shine through keycaps, it's extremely bright. You have all the modes reactive, just like everything else on the list, except for a few of them, but it's really, really bright. So if you did wanna just randomly mod this, put some pudding keycaps or some nice shine throughs on here, it's very bright. Overall, if you want a keyboard that is not only really, really good when you get it in stock form, but has the potential to be heavily modded, this is a great keyboard for only 86 bucks. Okay, but now we're getting into the really, really, really insane value. I love all of those keyboards on the list, but this is the point where it gets real, like really real. All right, moving on to the number three spot is the Techware Phantom 87. You guys knew it was gonna be on the list. Coming in at only 46 bucks, this is my most recommended budget TKL. Build quality is unbelievable at this price point. I have never found something even close to as good at this at this price point. The metal top plate is extremely rigid and it's high quality. The plastic bottom shell is also very rigid, very well made. It also has three different cable channels, which is really cool, and a keycap puller built into the base which is also just awesome. But moving on from that, moving to the inside of the board, there is foam in the case. But not only that, there is foam between the plate and the PCB. This is stuff that you only really see on higher end keyboards. Keyboards that cost 90 and above, you know, 150. There are some keyboards that cost well over that that don't even include that stuff. This is absolutely massive and it definitely changes the sound of this keyboard in total stock form. Now this comes in only black with a choice between red, brown, or blue switches. However, the stabilizers are where this thing really sets itself apart. They are tuned really incredibly for the price. These are absolutely the best stabilizers at this price that I've ever used. They are really good. I have reds. Take a listen to how good this sounds. And that is how it sounds. Now this is hot swappable with other Outemu, so you definitely can mod it, and I actually modded it myself. Now like I said, this doesn't have a detachable cable, but it does have three different cable channels, so that is cool. We do expect that at this price point. Now the RGB is great. It's nice and bright, it's vibrant. You have a ton of different static colors or colors to put on any mode, reactive, whatever you want. You actually have 87 different static colors. So you can absolutely match this perfectly to your setup, which is really big for me. Overall, this is a fantastic TKL that is amazing in stock form and can be really easily modded. Moving on to the number two spot. This is the Royal Kludge RK84 coming in at 80 bucks. This is one of my most recommended keyboards ever. This has a 75% form factor, which is popular among enthusiasts and laptop users. Build quality is very solid with the actual keyboard being quite heavy, a very strong plastic shell, and then a top metal plate. Now beyond that, this has a removable skirt similar to the LTC Nimbleback. However, this one is a little bit smaller around the edges. However, it can be just as easily popped off. And again, with this one, if you want to go outside, pop it off, paint it, throw it back on. This completely changes the overall color of the keyboard. That's all you really need to do. You don't really need to paint the base. You never see it on your desk. Now this comes in either black or white, which is very cool, with a choice between red, blue, or brown switches. Now the stabilizers do need some work as the Royal Clutch keyboards are made to be modded. However, after tuning, they sound really, really good. Here's the sound test with a totally stock one and then a modded build that I did. Take a listen. And that is how it sounds. Now this is obviously fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches, great for modding. But moving to the connectivity, this can be connected with a detachable USB-C cable. And when it is, like the LTC, you have two USB type A's that are powers. You can plug in your peripherals, whatever you want. That is huge. But not only that, you also have wireless connectivity with Bluetooth with like five or six different devices with a massive battery. Uh, but besides that, it also gives you a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. So if you wanna game wirelessly, 
that is absolutely huge. So you basically have a ton, the most amount of connectivity, which you can do whatever you want with that. That's huge. RGB is good with perky lighting, tons of modes, rainbow, whatever you want, static colors, whatever you want. It's not quite as bright as the RK61 and the RK68. However, it's just below those and it is nice and vibrant. Overall, one of the best budget keyboards out there to customize due to the features and modability. But moving on to the number one, best budget mechanical keyboard, that is the Echo 3068B coming in at 90 bucks. This has the most insane value. This is a 65% form factor, so you have those arrow keys and you have some of those multimedia keys while still being in that small package. Build quality is insanely good with a very solid plastic shell for the base. This is a two-piece plastic shell, which is cool. The top metal plate is very solid, but not just that. This has foam dampening between the PCB and the plate, which is huge. Now, this only comes in one colorway, which is black and pink. However, they give you a ton of these pink accent keys. It's more like a muted pink. Uh, it's not like a bright pink. It's like a very muted, it looks really nice in my opinion. However, if you don't like the pink, they have all of the black keycaps in there as well. So you can just have this thing be a solid stealthy black, which is very cool. And you can put all these different accent keys on the keyboard if you want to. Now these keycaps are very, very, very good for stock keycaps. These are actually keycaps that Akko makes and sells separately for 60 bucks for a pack. These are high quality PBT ASA profile keycaps really, really good. I've actually used these keycaps many times on my other keyboard modding builds. But the value does not stop there. Moving on to the switches, these come with Akko's own switches, which are really good. These come with jelly switches. You have the choice between jelly pinks, blues, or whites. Now the pinks and the whites are a linear switch. The pinks are slightly heavier at 45 grams, where the whites are 35 grams. The jelly blues are not a clicky switch, they're a tactile switch, which is great. So if you do like tactile, go with that jelly blue, but I have the pinks and they feel really, really good. They are a very, very nice switch for the price. And Akko also sells these separately for $17 a pack for a pack of 45 switches. So if you actually wanted to use the same switches and the same keycaps as this keyboard, it would cost you $94. That's more than the keyboard cost. So just for the switches and the keycaps, it's already way more than the keyboard which is nuts. That's why this is such an insane value. Now the stabilizers feel really, really good stock. There is literally no rattle. Take a listen. I have the jelly pinks. And that is how it sounds. Now this is fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches. So you definitely can mod this if you don't like the jelly pinks or the blues or the whites. Although I think you're going to because they're quite nice. Now this is also fantastic in terms of connectivity. This has a detachable USB-C for charging or connectivity because yes, it is wireless. And this can either be controlled via Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. What doesn't this keyboard give you? RGB is fantastic. It's very bright. It's very vibrant. You have all the static colors, all the modes, rainbow, whatever you want. Overall, this is the most insane value that I've seen with any mechanical keyboard. For 90 bucks, you are getting a keyboard that looks, feels, and sounds like a keyboard well over 200 bucks that has been modded. Again, if you wanna check out any of the 10 keyboards on this list, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, or you can check them out all right over there. But if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out, help me out and throw a like below. And if you enjoy other videos like this, consider subscribing. But this is Consumer Tech Review, and I'll see you guys in the next video.